Captain, Red Dog rushing over. Our job is to do this for the Army. Timber team, man your station. Man your station. You know, we could potentially be asked to do this in a wartime situation. The U.S. Army's 569th Dive Detachment is conducting deepwater dive training before deployment, and they're going after specific targets, old fishing nets, identified by biologists here in Washington's Puget Sound. For the Army, that makes for quite realistic training. What makes the conditions here so perfect for your training? It's really deep water. It's really cold. I mean, it makes the diving more dangerous. Basically, it makes it real for us. These nets are old. They're from the salmon fleet that was huge here for generations. To this day, those nets ensnare and harm marine life. Globally, lost nets are a problem too. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, researchers estimate 46% of it could be lost fishing gear. But Washington State is committed to the cleanup. You can look out here, it looks gorgeous and stunning, but the reality is our Puget Sound has been dying for quite some time. As the Commissioner for Public Lands for a Coastal State, Hilary Franz is tasked with protecting marine public lands for the health of the ocean's ecosystem. Since 2002, her office has worked with biologists like Kyle from the Natural Resources Consultants to identify and remove 5,800 shallow water nets, those green circles. The hard part has been going over 100 feet down. For us to be able to do that would cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. The remaining lost nets are really deep, those red triangles. So this here is the vessel location? Got it. So okay. Yeah, the ones with the scuba flags on it were, have been cleared during this project just in the last you know, couple weeks. And so to truly complete the cleanup, you need military-level capabilities. And the Army, they need deep, dangerous water. It's actually pretty hard to find 190 foot deep water yeah. in most parts of the U.S. You might need to take a boat 60 miles offshore, and now you've spent eight hours driving a boat and maybe done no training. Well, our shorelines are welcome to you any day. So I'm <laughs> going to tell you that right now. And we would uh, love yeah. to have you here doing this kind of work. <laughs> What's his depth at now? 135. Oh, understand. Oh, move around, look for the net. Move around and look for the net. Go catch on the truck. All right, keep going. If we have a net, we want to pull it up, not drag it off. That way it's not damaging the habitat that, uh, for the marine life down there. Just make sure it's free, going to be free and clear when you guys leave bottom so that we can pull it up. When observing these missions to retrieve nets from 140-foot depths, you start to realize why this work is expensive, time-consuming, and risky. One minute even, red dot rough and over. Get the hat off. Free. Got it, got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold him. Inside the chamber. Lock the door. Woo! Woo! 60 feet a minute. Understand. Inside the chamber, okay? Traveling. This side, that was the next up, next up. Four zero feet. In there. So we have a few more targets to go. <laughs> this is gill net. Not a very large one, but sometimes they all come in different sizes and shapes. This particular target was identified about 10 years ago with a uh, drop camera survey. Wow. Um, so it's taken 10 years since locating it to come out and find it and get it. Well, in this situation, yeah. yes. The 569th Detachment retrieved 1,500 pounds of nets in their 17 days of training. But there's still more deep water targets to go. So after all these years of cleanup, what's gonna prevent the problem from building up again? Well, as of 2012, Washington State requires commercial fishers to report lost nets under a no-fault rule. So if they can tell us, then we'll be able to go target it and get it out quicker. These days, to truly clean up the ocean requires decades of work, massive coordination, and military-level capabilities, all of which America has. We want to do this type of training anyways. It's gonna cost the Army money either way. Um, so if we're partnering, that's just a benefit to both parties. 